Councillors, now we move on to item 7.20 on page 156, Executive Committee. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, Chief Whip, members of the Mayoral Committee, Councillors, City Manager, CFO, Executive Directors, Ward Committee members, members of the public, representatives of the media, and all protocol observed. I must just look at my watch. It's not good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Speaker, the budget presented today is based on the Integrated Development Plan, also refer referred to as the IDP. Our five-year IDP supports our vision of a city of excellence. We will achieve our vision by addressing the following seven performance, key performance areas, or KPAs. One, good governance. Two, financial sustainability. Three, institutional transformation. Four, physical infrastructure and services. Five, planning and economic development. Six, safety and environmental management. And seven, social and community development. The seven KPAs are supported by 56 key focus areas or KFAs that are in turn aligned to the performance management system of Drakenstein. Key performance indicators and targets are developed and included in the annual performance agreements of the members of the mayoral committee and the executive management. The review of the 18-19 budget comments. In the budget of the 2018-2019 financial year, the executive mayor made various commitments to the community. I would like to reflect on some of the achievements. One, bulk and basic infrastructure services for the Flakkerland housing project, in which approximately 40, uh, 94 houses of the 180 houses under construction will be completed in the 2018-19 financial year at a cost of 125.6 million. Two, construction of basic infrastructure at Lantana in Schoongezicht at a cost of 11.7 million. Three, the Strawberry King bulk water pipeline from the N1 to Wellington, which ensures water provision for the Flakkerland development and the Northern City Corridor Catalytic Zone was completed at a cost of 28.1 million. Four, boils with pumps and filtration plant equipment were completed at a cost of 75,8 million. Five, the Wellington and the Paul Wastewater Treatment Works, a multi-year project over three financial years was completed at a cost of 294 million, 60,7 million in the current financial year. An estimated amount of 70,9 million was spent on the upgrade <coughs> and construction of water treatment plants, a reservoir, and bulk water networks providing water to Paul and Wellington. An amount of 25,1 million was spent on the electrification of informal settlements. An estimated 850 structures will be electrified by 30 June 2019. <coughs> These structures are in the following areas. Palmitrefeer, that's in Ribbock Street, Bosbok Flats, Paul East, Brickfields, Joe Williams Camp, Sia Slala, Phase 1, and OR Tambu. Bulk electricity supply through the upgrade of the 66 kV electricity cables at the substation at the cost of 100 million. An amount of 3 million was contributed towards the upgrading of floodlights at the Boland Park, thus enabling Drakenstein to host international events. The Berg River Boulevard Class 1 dual carriageway project was completed and 37,6 million was spent during the financial year. The Van der Stel Street project will be completed at the estimated cost of 21,9 million in this financial year. An estimated 6,5 million was spent on tarring of pavements and the construction of speed bumps. Streets and stormwater infrastructure were upgraded in Saron at a cost of 12,1 million. Vehicles and equipment to enhance service delivery to the value of 14,9 million were procured of which 3,4 million was spent on firefighting equipment and vehicles. The construction and upgrading of sport facilities at Boilo, New Orleans Park, Dal Yosafat, The Kraal, Pelican Park, Mbekweni, Parijs, Newton and Forest Street Stadium at a cost of 30,1 million. Swimming pools were upgraded at an estimated cost of 3 million. Community halls 
Public Facilities, Paul Town Hall and Early Childhood Development ECD infrastructure were upgraded at a cost of 5,1 million. Library Services infrastructure were upgraded at a cost of 6,7 million. Parks, open spaces and playgrounds were upgraded at a cost of 8,4 million. An amount of 2,4 million was spent on the construction of aprons around the rental stock. A further 1,7 million was spent on the upgrading of rental stock. An amount of 1,1 million was spent on the establishment of new safety control center. An estimated 5 million was spent on the Paint My Story project. An amount of 2,3 million was spent to promote tourism in Drakenstein. Financial support to supporting and other events, sporting and other events, amounted to 9,9 million. And 809,000 was spent on bursaries and driver's license training programs for the youth. Speaker, actual and committed capital expenditure after 10 months of the financial year stands at 88,9%. And it is envisaged that actual capital expenditure at the end of the year will amount to 95% of the current capital budget of 615,3 million. Rollovers to the 2019-2020 financial year will be limited as procurement and actual spending is at a level that exceeds previous financial years. Public participation process. This speech draws its substance from the extensive public participation process that was embarked on since the draft IDP and budget were approved on the 28th of March 2019. Louis Liu holds a formal, former American football player, coach and the analyst said, I follow three rules, do the right thing, do the best you can and always show people you care. Speaker, this quote befits this budget, for it is truly an expression of how Drakenstein Municipality responded to all our stakeholders in doing what is the right for our community to the best of our abilities in a caring manner. Housing summits were conducted in all relevant municipal wards during March 2019, preceding the IDP engagements. In total, 14 summits me summit meetings were conducted. The objectives of, of the summit were to share information on the current state of housing in the municipality as well as planned interventions. The sessions were generally well received and feedback sessions were, uh, are planned towards the end of 2019. The public participation process was further enhanced through the Mayoral Business Stakeholder Initiative MBSI, which took place on a monthly basis with different stakeholder groups. The theme covered during the 2018-19 financial year included education, tourism, youth, arts and culture, women and children, and people with disability. These enga engagement provided the various groups with a platform to raise matters relating to, the, to their field of interest. Council approved the draft IDP, draft budget, reviewed budget-related policies and draft tariffs on the 28th of March 2019, and our public participation program was rolled out through an IDP and budget roadshow arranged in all 33 wards from the 7th to the 30th of April 2019. An IDP representative forum meeting was also held on the 15th of May 2019 with the Cape Winelands District Municipality, provincial sector departments and community-based organizations. The Rockenstein Municipality was praised for good service delivery and also made aware of problem areas which would have to be addressed going forward. There is still a, an outcry for low-cost housing electricity in informal and backyard structures, upgrading and establishment of parks, safety and security, road safety in rural areas, road infrastructure, tarring of pavements, job creation, and various other issues. We have recommitted ourselves through a budget that can be described as pro-poor to address these matters. Comments received from the public. In addition to the many verbal inputs gathered during the public meetings, the people of Drakenstein also submitted written comments to the draft IDP and budget for 2019-2020. All the verbal comments received during the 33 ward meetings 
and that the IDP representative forum were documented and is rec uh, recorded in the revised IDP. Five written comments were received on the draft budget and one of these were in the provincial IDP and budget assessment report attached to the budget item as annexure A. We have also received a written proposal from Radio Casey which will be considered with all the other comments. Speaker taking into consideration all the verbal and written comments received from the public, a number of changes were made to the draft capital and operating budget. The proposed changes will improve the quality of life of the poor and vulnerable individuals in our community. To fund the capital projects, we will take up new external loans to the amount of 60, 160 million, which is substantially lower than the previous four years. This will ensure that our current gearing ratio decreased to an amount of, uh, to an estimated 69,3% in 2019-2020 and to an estimated 47,2% in the 2023-2024 financial year. Capital and operating budget. Speaker, the total proposed budget for 2019-2020 financial year amounts to 2,857 billion comprising of 2,479 billion operating and 378 million capital budget. I will discuss the budget in terms of the following categories. One, expanded public works program. Two, human settlements. Three, water and sanitation. Four, electricity. Five, roads and stormwater. Six, sport facilities, parks and cemeteries. Seven, tourism and economic development. 8 general community projects, 9 ward projects, 10 new initiatives and 11 financial assistance to the poor. Expanded Public Works Programme or EPWP. Speaker, it is important for us to facilitate the creation of job opportunities in fair and transparent manner. Increase the chances of beneficiaries to create sustainable livelihoods and improve service delivery. During the current financial year, Council approved adjustments to the EPWP policy to increase control over recruitment, selection and contract administration for better service delivery, as well as a 25% increase to the wages paid to the EPWP beneficiaries. The Drakenstein municipality was also acknowledged for its excellent performance by the Director EPWP Provincial Coordination and Compliance Monitoring. The targets for work opportunities and full-time equivalent were far exceeded for the period 1st of April 2018 to 31st of December 2018. The expanded public works program for 2019-2020 makes provision for approximately 1,030 job opportunities at an estimated cost of 10.4 million. The National Department of Transport and Public Works EPWP grant contributes 5,2 million and Drakenstein Municipality 5,2 million. The EPWP will focus on the following projects. Social sector project, there are two of them, emergency controllers and peace officers. Environmental sector projects, are seven projects there. One, cleaning and beautification of informal settlements. 2. Cleaning of high density areas, 3. Cleaning of stormwater systems, 4. Cleaning of swimming pools and resorts, 5. Cleaning of parks and cemeteries, 6. Cleaning of public and informal settlement toilets, 7. Cleaning of community and services building. Enterprise development sector project, there is 1. Business skills development in area cleaning. Infrastructure sector projects, there are 3. 1. Electrical substation maintenance. 2. Sport facilities maintenance and 3. Rental stock maintenance. Human settlements. Speaker in terms of Schedule 4, Part A of the Constitution. Housing is a national and provincial government competence. National, government, uh, national housing legislation prescribes that the municipality must perform this function on behalf of the national government with financial assistance from the national fiscus. Bulk and basic infrastructure services for about 667 sites in the Flakkerland housing projects and 487 new houses should be constructed in the 1920 financial year at a cost of 107,1 million. 
During the current financial year, we also focused on restoring the pride and the dignity of our people and communities in informal settlements through the following projects. One, replacing doors of ablution facilities with recycled compressed plastic, which has no resale value. Simonium and brickfields were completed. This is an ongoing project into the 2019-2020 financial year. And a contractor was also appointed to improve the access of basic services in informal areas. Jan Fiskal and Bosbok informal areas are in the process of being completed and work in the Grijsbok and Spooky Square areas are next in line. Improving access to basic services are set to continue in the new financial year. The objective is to provide all 43 informal settlements with dignified basic services. Water and sanitation. Two basic services that Drakenstein must provide is clean drinking water and sanitation. For the 2019-2020 financial year, we are budgeting 121,4 million for these services and will include the following. One, construction of a bulk water pipeline and the water treatment works at Saron, 62,9 million, of which 47,7 million is grant funding. Two, construction of bulk services, water treatment works and reservoirs and water networks at a cost of 21,6 million. Replacement of water reticulation networks, 9,6 million. Upgrade of infrastructure at the Wellington and Paul Wastewater Treatment Works, 7,1 million. Five, installation of purification equipment at boreholes at a cost of 5 million. Six, infrastructure for the recycling of purified sewer effluent, 4,2 million. Seven, construction of bulk and, and internal sewer networks, 3,9 million. And eight, basic water and sanitation infrastructure in informal settlements at 3,3 million. Electricity. In the 2019-2020, uh, sorry, the 2019-2020 budget makes provision for 46,9 million to cater inter alia for the following electricity infrastructure pro projects. One, bulk electricity supply to Flakkeland housing project, 16,2 million. Two, upgrading and replacement of high tension, medium tension and low tension networks at a cost of 13,2 million. Three, upgrading of electricity substations, 4,8 million. And electrification of informal settlements, 10 million. Speaker section 50, 152, subsection 1b and subsection 2 of the constitution determines that one of the objectives of local government is to ensure the provision of services to communities in a sustainable manner within its financial administrative capacity. Access to electricity is regarded as a basic need and currently Drakenstein equitable share, municipal infrastructure grant, the MIG grant, and the integrated national electrification program, program INEP allocates, allocations are insufficient. The purpose of INEP allocation from the Department of Energy and Mineral Affairs is to provide access to electricity for breaking new ground or BNG houses for the poor that we built on behalf of national and provincial government. <coughs> no national grant funding is made available for the electrification of structures in informal settlements. By allocating 10 million to the electrification of informal settlements and approximate 250 additional informal structures can be provided with access to electricity. This allocation will speed up the electrification program to, of informal settlements and improve the quality of life of people staying in informal structures. The Rakenstein municipality is very aware that a lack of electricity <coughs> keeps people impoverished. The result, this results in a deprivation of access to key opportunities such as education, skills development, job opportunities, etc. The allocation of 10 million must also cater for the upgrade of transformers and electricity networks. The informal settlement electrification program for 2019-2020 will include the following. One, Noordkamp and Meilaan. Two, Delvi Store, Sand Street. Plankiesdorp, Dietman Street, Siaslala Phase 2, Dromedare Street, McQueenie, New Orleans Park, Silver 5, and Touchlights and Smoke Detectors 
for those informal structures that cannot be supplied with electricity next year. Speaker, it is important to note that some of the above mentioned informal areas are subject to consent from private landowners and if any structures fall within ESCOM or any other servitude, it may not and will not be electrified. Roads and stormwater. Speaker, integrated urban planning, economic growth and sustainable development starts with a well-developed and maintained integrated road network. Therefore, maintenance and investment in roads and stormwater infrastructure is very important and we have provided 27.5 million for the 2019-2020 financial year. The main projects are the following. One, starting with the construction of a dual carriageway in Oosbosch Street from the Burg River Boulevard to Jan van Riebeek Road, 17.5 million. The resealing of streets, 6 million. Traffic calming, traffic signals and traffic lights, 3 million. Tarring of sidewalks, 1 million to ensure the sidewalks are walkable during the rainy season. Sport facilities, parks and cemeteries. Speaker, the infrastructure for sport, parks and cemeteries is also an important focus area in our IDP and we provided 42.1 million for the 2019-2020 financial year. The main capital and operating projects for next year are as follows. One, the upgrading and construction of parks, swimming pools and sporting infrastructure and facilities at Boilo, Newton, Dal Yosafat, Ferryland, the Kral and Parais at the cost of 25.9 million. The upgrading of play parks and open space and spaces 3.3 million. The development and upgrading of cemeteries 12 million. Tourism and economic development. Speaker, one of our key performance areas is to promote the facility and, and facilitate economic development. Tourism is one of the main economic drivers in Drakenstein and this budget provides 12.6 million for the following projects and initiatives. One, contributing towards various sporting and other events, 5.2 million. Two, Boland Park floodlights, 3 million. Three, contributing towards the Drakenstein Locust, Local Tourism Association, 3 million. Four, infrastructure for formal traders, 1.4 million. <coughs> general projects. Speaker, other general projects, programs and initiatives that we will support to improve service delivery and the living conditions of our community in the next financial year are, one, the Paint My Story project to paint the municipal rental stock. 4.6 million. Extension and upgrading of the traffic center, 3.5 million. Tarring of aprons around <coughs> municipal rental stock, 3 million, to ensure that aprons are walkable during the rainy season. Four, the purchasing of vehicles and equipment, 12.3 million. Investing in early childhood development infrastructure, 1.1 million. And rural development programs that will include skills development and bursaries, 900,000. Ward Committee support. Speaker, each ward will receive an allocation of 170,000 for operational projects and each ward committee member will receive a quarterly stipend of 750 rand. New initiatives. <coughs> Reducing deviations. An initiative that provided to be successful was the reduction of impractical and impossible or red deviations approved by and reported to council. During the 2014-2015 financial year, the impractical, impossible deviations amounted to 62.9 million. It then decreased to 54.1 million in 15-16, before it increased to 63 million in 2016-2017. In 2017-2018, it reduced to 17.9 million, and currently it stands at 3.7 million for the 18-19 financial year. The significant decrease was achieved through better procurement planning and by ensuring that rate standards are in place for construction projects as well as goods and other services to be procured. Revenue and Expenditure manager, Management. The city manager established a project team to focus on revenue and expenditure <coughs> management. The purpose of this project is to streamline all business processes involved in revenue management and billing, as well as expenditure. All revenue leakages will be detected and standard operating procedures 
needs to be developed to ensure that all revenue are billed and collected. Administrative adjudication and road traffic offense are to act. The Administrative Adjudication of Road Traffic Offence Act number 46 of 1999 R2 as amended has been submitted to the Office of the Presidency for signature after which it will become enforceable act of law. In essence R2 regulates how future traffic infringements will be captured, categorized, adjudicated and enforced. The municipality must log, capture and verify the traffic infringement and notify the traffic offender in a prescribed manner to be paid within 32 days, failing which the infringement is then followed by the Road Traffic Infringement Agency or RTIA, taking over the administrative process of collecting the outstanding fine. If payment is made to, by the offender within 32 days, a 50% discount will apply. Should it not should he not pay within 32 days, no discount will apply and the municipality will receive 47% of the full amount. It further has removed the possibility of the offender approaching the court for assistance to R2 as for the, uh, the court for assistance as R2 has introduced an appeals tribunal as per chapter 4 of the bill, which removes the jurisdiction of a municipal court for administering traffic fines. The Rakenstein Smart Safety Net Network, DSSN project. The DSSN <coughs> is a partnership between the Rakenstein Municipality, Provincial Department of Community Safety, the South African Police Services, SAPS, community-based safety organizations, neighborhood watches, farm watches, and private sector companies. The DSSN will provide a platform to work together and share information on safety and security incidents and threats in real time using cutting edge technology. Phase one of the project will be rolled out during the 2019-2020 financial year and an amount of 2.1 million has been budgeted. In addition, discussions were held with the provincial government regarding cooperation and funding opportunities for the project as well as innovative ways to improve the safety and security within the municipal area. Safe havens. A significant challenge throughout South Africa is the growing number of homeless street people. We will focus on a multi-stakeholder intervention including measures to support the provision of adequate shelter and on job creation measures to pro proactively engage street people with the aim of reintegrating them into social family structures. An amount of 400,000 Rand is allocated in the 2019-2020 budget for NGO, NPO, CBO support to assist with above mentioned challenges. Financial assistance to the poor. Speaker, the equitable share we receive to assist indigent household is insufficient and we are proposing changes to, the, to our credit control policy to align to the cooperative governance and traditional affairs guidelines. Our current policy makes provision to subsidize indigent households with a monthly income threshold of up to 4,250 Rand. Retired and disabled persons with a monthly income threshold of between 4,251 to 6,250 received financial assistance varying between 80, 50 and 20 percent of the indigent subsidy. It is now proposed, Speaker, that we amend our policies and tariffs to give financial assistance to all households, people receiving social allowances, child-headed families, retired people, the disabled and the unemployed, based on the following sliding scale. Category A, all households with a monthly income of up to 4,450 will receive 100% of the financial assistance package we offer. Category B, all households with a monthly income between 4,451 to 4,950 will receive 80% of the financial assistance package we offer. Category C. All households with a monthly income between 4,951 and 6,200 will receive 50% of the financial assistance package we offer. And Category D. All households with a monthly income between 6,201 
and 6,500 will receive 20% of the financial package we offer. Speaker, the financial assistance we will provide to all households described in categories A, B, C and D above comprise of the following. One, property rates will be subsidized up to the first 500,000 of the municipal valuation of the property. Two, the basic charge of a 30 amp uh, electricity connection will be subsidized. Please note that the 20 amp electricity connection does not have a basic charge. Three, 100 free units of electricity for category A and B households and 50 free units of electricity for the category C and D households. The basic charge for water connection will be subsidized. Six kiloliters of free water for all categories. One refuse bin per household will be subsidized. Basic sewerage charge will be subsidized based on, on that for an earth of 550 square meters. One toilet per household will be subsidized and flat rentals up to the maximum of the basic service will be subsidized. Speaker, to ensure that everybody understands the new financial assistance package, we must define a household and household income. The definition below are aligned to the national policy of the, for the provision of basic refuse removal services to indigent households by the Department of Environmental Affairs, notice 413 of 2011. Household means a person of all persons, in brackets then, registered owners or owner, occupier or occupiers, vulnerable person or vulnerable persons, or tenant or tenants, jointly living on a stand or site, receiving sanitation, refuse removal, water and electricity services that is billed by the municipality. Household income means the gross sum of the monthly income from all sources, including wages, salaries, profits, dividends, pensions, rentals, board and lodging, interest received, grants or investment income, and other forms of earnings received by all persons residing on the property. Speaker, no policy on the matter raised above can be cast in stone. There will always be exceptional circumstances that needs to be catered for. In addition, the financial assistance sliding scale might lead to the underutilization of the equitable share. Therefore, the credit control policy will also make provision for the executive mayor in consultation with the city manager to adjust the income thresholds upwards after the first three months of 2019-2020 financial year should the equitable share be underutilized. Furthermore, the city manager, in consultation with the chief financial officer, will have the delegated powers to <coughs> migrate households from category D to C, from C to B, from B to A in exceptional circumstances as noted in the revised credit control policy. Budget related policy. Speaker, no comments were received on our budget related policies. All proposed policies changes will be implemented if approved by Council today. Integrated Urban Development Grant, IUDG. Speaker, some good news. The Rakenstein municipality was identified by COCTA as one of the six secondary cities qualifying to take part in the IUDG program. As from the 1st of July 2019, the municipality will migrate from the Municipal Infrastructure Grant, the old MIG grant, to the Integrated Urban Development Grant, IUDG grant program. The MIC allocation for the 2018-19 financial year amounted to 34.4 million, and the IUDG allocation for the 2019-2020 financial year is 49 million. The Rakenstein, together with Polokwane, Solplaik, Ismogale City, Umschlatuz, Stellenbosch are the secondary cities on this grant program. For the purpose, we had to compile a capital expenditure framework, the CEF, for the next 10 years. And the CEF business plan is attached to the budget item as an extra D for Council's approval. New tariffs. Speaker, two, new, uh, two written comments we received on our new tariffs. 
to be implemented as from the 1st of July 2019. The Paul Ratepayers Association questioned the high refuse removal tariff. After benchmarking our tariff with other municipalities in the Western Cape, we came to the conclusion that our refuse removal tariffs are cost reflective and we do not recommend any changes to the tariffs. The Federal Hospitality Association of South Africa, or FEDHASA, and Le Munklu of Guesthouse questioned the high additional sewage levy per toilet based on the fact that the hospitality industry occupation rate for guest houses is not 100% all year round. We propose a new tariff for each additional toilet as set out in the tariff book attached to the budget in Annexure C. Based on the draft NERSA guidelines issued in the, on electricity tariffs, the electricity tariffs will on average increase with 13.93% and not the 14.02% as communicated with the public. We have submitted our electricity tariffs to NERSA and to wait their approval. The remaining tariff tariffs are unchanged as communicated with the public. Speaker, at this stage, I want to thank the public for honoring their commitments in paying their property rates and service charges. We budgeted for a revenue collection rate of 97.8% on build revenue and for the shortfall of 2.2% we made provision for bad debt impairment. The quality of services we render is only possible due to the cooperation of the community in honoring the payment of the municipal bills. <coughs> Concluding remarks speaker, speaker building on our successes over the past eight years, the proposed final budget is pro poor, supports economic growth and socioeconomic needs of the residents of Drakenstein and our financial sustainability. Drakenstein Vision 2032 and its strategic objectives are aligned to the national and the provincial strategic objectives and outcomes. The proposed final budget is based on realistic revenue streams and the credible and sustainable as the assessment report of the provincial government confirms. I want to make it clear that the Drakenstein municipality pays all creditors, councillors and officials punctually every month. Speaker, allow me a final remark. A report was published by the National Treasury in June 2018 on the state of local government finances and financial management as at the 30th of June 2017. This report assesses the financial health of all municipalities in South Africa through eight indicators and they are 1. Cash availability to meet its fixed operating expenditure requirements 2. Persistence of negative cash balances, bank overdraft Overspending of original operating budgets Underspending of original capital budgets Debtor as a percentage of own revenue year-on-year -year growth in debtors, creditors as a percentage of cash investment, and reliance on national and provincial government grants. Speaker, in the category of the 27 largest municipalities in South Africa, made up of the eight metros and the 19 secondary cities, Drakenstein was rated number one, jointly with Umslatuz, which is the old richest bay, in KwaZulu-Natal. With regard to the Western Cape province, which performed the best of all provinces in terms of metros and secondary cities, Drakenstein was rated number one, followed by Stellenbosch in the second place, and the city of Cape Town and George jointly in the third place. Speaker Drakenstein for the 2017-18 financial year also received an 11th consecutive unqualified audit opinion from the Auditor General. As Acting Executive Mayor, I am proud of the achievements of Drakenstein Municipality and would like to thank all councillors, the City Manager, Executive Directors and staff members for their contributions to achieve these excellent results. Speaking with these remarks, I herewith present Drakenstein's final 2019-2020 budget. I respectfully submit the 25 recommendations in the budget item to Council for consideration and approval. Speaker, I so move. Thank you. Thank you very much.